All right, so uh, thanks one and all for coming to the Art and Climate Change uh, workshop uh, by Jennifer. Um, this is uh, one of the workshops um, organized all right, uh, by Blip, which is a uh, Blip in Time. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a showcase of 12 women artists um, trying to actually respond to the incorporation of tech uh, in their work. And this will uh, result in a showcase in Jurong Regional Library from 1st to 14 April. So meanwhile, uh, we are having actually participating artists come in for workshops as well as talks so that they can introduce you uh, to, to you more on, on their, I guess, um, topics of interest. And today we have uh, Jennifer with us today. Okay, uh, she's going to introduce us to topics that she finds dearly to her heart, which is climate change. Um, and she will actually... Uh... Ah! Oh no! We'll actually do one uh okay, Jennifer, are you all right? Uh, the screen froze. I think that is the connection for this laptop. <laughs> but okay. should I just continue first? Yeah, sure. I will be bringing a backup over so in case we have disruptions. Yeah. All right, over to you, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, as I was saying, uh, this is actually a PG workshop because we are sharing things which are kind of almost adult content. Um, so if you are with your kids, make sure you actually, you might want to have a conversation after this. Uh, if your kid is alone, I think you should come. Uh, okay, I'm just going to start right now. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I can't see most of you, so I'm not sure uh, whether you are alone or with children. I can see one, one girl, very cute girl. <laughs> um, I think you should get your mom over here or whoever you're with, Kathleen. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, share screen. All right. Okay, so um, initially I wanted to talk, just talk about climate change, um, which is the term that we usually see in the newspaper, in the news. Uh, but actually, uh, I think the right term right now is climate crisis because it is much more than just climate change we are facing. And um, uh, so with this workshop, I, I will I want to try to talk a little bit about what's going to happen in the near future and um, and also uh, how we can kind of uh, use art to talk about our feelings and our thoughts and to share with other people um, what we think is important to us. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start uh, my new laptop is here. So should we change over or? Yes, I'll continue. Okay, so, okay. so I'm going to continue. So the first slide, uh, there's, there's not going to be a lot of slides. So this is the first part. I'll talk about the various issues we're facing. Um, and then I'll talk about some, some uh, responses from artists. Oh, and what's happening? Um, okay, so this is the introduction. And then, then we'll talk about some issues and some of the things we can do as individual people, as uh, people in the community, and as people, uh, citizens of Singapore and of the world. And then we'll move on to talk about some artworks. I'll show you some examples. Um, and then we'll do the hands-on. And uh, then after that, you can we can share. So I would like you guys to also like show us all what you've made and talk a little bit about what you feel and what you're trying to do with your artwork. And then we will end, okay? So it's, it's going to be quite fast. It's one hour and we've already lost some time because of the technical problems. Uh, but yeah, so, um, so a little bit about myself. I'm, I'm an artist and uh, I work mainly with community and with uh, lots of different people. And we, we talk about social issues. We talk about environment issues. Um, we talk about uh, different things and then we make artwork together. 
And then so some of the issues I've dealt with include uh, include um, the cutting down of forests uh, to build uh, roads, uh, the uh, loneliness in people, and, and there's so many issues to be faced in this world today. So um, I think uh, what I do is quite important because we, we do try to help people and we bridge um, people who otherwise, you know, maybe don't have anyone to talk to about the issues they're facing. And then we also try to convert some of the feelings and thoughts into action, into artworks, um, into conversations. So uh, this workshop is, is just uh, kind of part of what I'm interested and in, what I do all the time. Yeah, so okay, let's move on. So some of the issues uh, we are facing, this is... Um, uh, yeah, I tried to put some little notes for myself because there's actually a lot of issues and um, uh, and they are all interconnected. So although you see like bigger words which are kind of the points, they are all connected to one another. So on the left, when uh, global temperature, that's the first thing that most people think about when we think about climate change. Uh, actually, global temperature and sea level rise are the two main things that we talk about. Um, so already in these few years, every year the temperature is rising, every year it gets hotter. And um, it's actually connected to the extreme weather as well. We have like heavier rains, we have hotter weather. So 90% of disasters right now, they are all connected to the weather, to the climate. Um, not just in Singapore, but everywhere in the world. Um, and uh, one of the main issues is that uh, the global temperature, uh, even though you know cold places are getting colder, on the average, the global temperature is rising. And we are, we are trying really, um, by right, we should be trying to limit this to less than two degrees Celsius. Otherwise, you know, really, really bad things are, are gonna happen. And right now it's already more than one degree Celsius increase. Um, so this is also connected to the sea level rise because when the temperature gets hotter, the sea ice will melt, the glacier will melt, and then this will cause, you know, the water to rise in the sea. And, um, and the, the issue is that most of the world's population, like two thirds of the world's cities with more than 5 million people, they are all, actually we are all living next to the sea. So when the sea level rises, um, all these cities, all these people, they are, where are they going to go? Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of one of the main reasons, uh, one of the main issues that governments and cities are facing. Uh, it is, all these are very visible issues, right? You, you can see it, you can feel it. Um, and then, of course, right now we have the coronavirus. This is uh, part, of, uh, part of the issue as well, and this is not going to be the only virus. We've already had Ebola, we have SARS, we have lots of... Um, uh, we have swine flu, we have uh, bird flu, avian flu. All these are actually diseases which are linked to animals. Um, and, and because of the way that we are destroying the, the habitat, um, viruses are finding it easier to jump from animals to humans. And um, this is going to be a very big issue as well. And it's really, even when we had the vaccine, uh, is not going to stop because there will be newer and newer viruses. Um, and then of course, then, um, and then, uh, okay, it's in the connector, so I'm going to jump, I think that's probably easier. So when we talk about the loss of biodiversity, um, we are actually talking about the forests, the oceans which are being destroyed, um, the wetlands. So more than 65% of wetlands, 75% of land, and 66% of the oceans, they, they are actually uh, have been changed very much so that uh, actually life in it is, um, is having a big problem. Uh, and so biodiversity actually uh, just means like, you know, the animals, plants that's in on earth, um, they are actually suffering and actually we are losing so many uh, species. Actually, um, by the end of this talk in one hour, we would have lost already 12 species because the, it's estimated that every five minutes we lose one. Um, so, you know, of course, like with the polar bears, with the tigers, 
with big animals that we see and we know, um, we actually feel a loss. Uh, I mean, if it's your favorite animal, of course, you'd be really sad. But actually, there's so many animals, so many plants, insects. Um, the losing of the biodiversity actually is the greatest thing that we're facing. And this is not even directly, I mean, it's not uh, classified as the climate change. So with the climate crisis, actually the loss of the biodiversity is one of the biggest, um, biggest problem uh, because um, not only plants and animals provide us with food, uh, the provisioning service, uh, but also the regulating service, which is the forests, the oceans, uh, how they regulate the temperatures, the, the, the hot air and cold air, the, the currents in the seas. All these are, are things that we can actually cannot see. So because we cannot see and we cannot really feel them directly, we actually, it's easy for us to ignore and the problem. Okay, um, so you, please, you can read up about it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to skip ahead to, to um, this report by the World Economic Forum. So, okay, you might, uh, there's a lot of people who are still trying to deny this, um, this problem that we are facing. Um, but uh, when the World Economic Forum, who is people, you know, who is basically just interested in money and in finances, when they say it's a problem, it really is a problem, okay? So uh, this is a report that is just up this year. And uh, it says that, now they still use the word climate change, but really it's just, it's, it is a climate crisis. And so um, you can see, on the right side, the top risk by likelihood and the top risk by impact. Actually, the green, the green color uh, ones are connected to the climate. So I was saying that, yeah, so climate crisis is really real and it's coming, it's, it's already here. So if you look at the bottom of the slide, um, the existential, existential threats, which are the long-term risks from five to 10 years from now, um, Biodiversity loss is the biggest risk uh, uh, in terms of the climate and the natural resource and then climate action failure. So basically, uh, I, it says, because I cannot see myself. Yeah. Uh, sorry about this. <laughs> Can I? Okay. Um, yeah, so so actually biodiversity loss is going to lead to net natural resource crisis as well in terms of food and water and land. Um, so uh, these, I think, really are the two main problems. And the climate action failure really is how the governments and the big businesses are going to fail us. So basically what we really need to do now is to really try to hold them accountable and to try to um, push for change. Um, okay, let me go next. Okay, so these are some of the actions we can do today. I mean, uh, of course, a lot of it you probably know or you've heard about. Um, so uh, I don't think I really need to go through it, but if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I think um, one of the main things we need to do right now is to stop carbon emission, which is really leading to um, the increase in carbon in the air, which is increasing the temperature. In, uh, and uh, that is one of the things that we can do is uh, we need to cut down on the use of fossil fuels, which means we, we should use less energy. Um, we should you know, not turn on the aircon as much. We should um, we should uh, turn off the the plants when they're not using even electric appliances. Uh, and then we should invest in renewables. We should use solar energy. We should use wind energy. Um, we should actually just use less energy. Uh, and of course, um, consume wisely. Uh, eat uh, more vegetables. Less meat. Less fishes. Uh, the seas are getting empty, so we need to stop overfishing. Uh, we need to um, grow our own food. We need to eat, stop eating buffets. We need to eat what we need and not what we feel like eating. Uh, we need to waste less, uh, waste less. Uh, so you know, yeah, just don't 
just take everything um, seriously and we need to respect and help nature in every way we can. Um, as, uh, as so many ways actually. Uh, and then uh, we really should uh, talk to people about the climate crisis as well. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, because I think uh, right now uh, most of us, uh, there isn't uh, if, if it's a crisis, like your house is burning, uh, we shouldn't be like act like normal, right? I think it's, it's really a problem um, and we really need to be responsible and to face it straight on. So, uh, so whenever we can, um, whenever we can, we should talk about this. Um, so, uh, this workshop is one of the things that I'm doing. Uh, you can do this with anyone. You can talk about it at your dinner table. You can you can tell people why you should eat less meat. Um, you can uh, compost your vegetables. Uh, you can help to create better soil, uh, plant more trees. There's so many things out there that you can uh, learn about on the internet and by like, talking to other people who've been doing it for a long time. Uh, ind indigenous cultures are really good. Uh, because they've been living with the land for a long time um, and there are lots of local greed and community efforts lots of groups here in singapore so please find them and uh, and try to do something with them uh, if you can at least uh, you can donate money support what they're doing um, and then of course uh, we need to urge the government to take bold climate action um, there's a singapore green plan uh, go read it uh, is Singapore Green Plan 2030, you can find it on the internet. Uh, it, say, it talks about what the government is planning to do. Uh, it's not very bold, but uh, go read it and then give your feedback. Okay, there's so many things that we can do. And actually, if we don't do anything now, things will get worse very quickly. Uh, yeah, things will go things will go bad very quickly if we do something today. Things will go bad, but less quickly, especially for people who are children right now. For people with children, um, you know, it's um, we will see in our lifetimes, but the children are the ones who will get it worse. Okay, okay. So um, let me go move on to some of the artworks. So let me start with this photo uh, of the Yanomami. Uh, they are people who live in the Amazon, uh, in this place that we call Brazil. Um, of course, they have a much, you know, they have a huge area in the forest where they live. Um, and this artist, she has been photogra photographing them since the 70s, so about 50 years. So in the beginning, she was really just interested in these this people, right? They're so interesting, their life is so different. So she went to photograph them. And then, um, and then she became actually an activist to help them to uh, own the territory that they live in and to help them to fight all the big corporate uh, interests were trying to take over the land. Um, so I wanted to start with this because uh, sometimes it's just something that we're interested in and then we just do it and then we find something else and we'll find something else and then we'll help people. Mm -hmm. This is also in the 70s, this is by a local artist. Um, actually, it's just like a cloth that's put in this, this land and uh, he was trying to kind of document in a way the, the erosion of the land. So you can see there are actually lines and that's when the water goes up and down when it's raining. Um, and this is something kind of quite simple, uh, quite poetic. Uh, and uh, yeah, something which maybe you don't think is an artwork because it is it's like just hanging coffee in the earth. But uh, this is what we, we call earth, uh, land art. So there's a whole bunch of uh, artists. Um, it's a traditional in the arts where we, we do things that's related to the land. And then this artist, uh, this is actually uh, a field in New York. So 
1982, she turned this field into a wheat field. Uh, it was really, you know, showing the, uh, the urban and, you know, rural disconnect, right? So, like, like most of us who grew up in the city, we actually have never seen how our food is grown. Uh, I know people, I know children who's, who doesn't know that, you know, drumsticks come from chicken. Like, there is a real disconnect. And, I, I, and also, the wheat field is beautiful. So, so in this work, she tries to talk about some of these issues and whether, you know, we should uh, clear all the, all the agriculture land to build cities. Uh, this is a big problem. Uh, food insecurity is a big problem. Um, but in the 80s, uh, we are not really talking about it yet. So this is quite, quite early, I guess. This is a beautiful tapestry. So this whole thing is sewn. Uh, it's a really long, it's actually really long, and this is just one part of it. So uh, in this work, um, this artist is talking about the fossil fuel industry. So she talks about um, oil, basically, and then you can see at the bottom, there's all these dinosaurs. So, so basically, oil, oil comes from, petroleum comes from all these dead animals in the soil that's been there for millions of years. And then um, in this work, so she's talking about, in this panel, I especially, is really talking about the pollution that we are facing. But it's very beautifully uh, sold. So there are different techniques you can use um, to make artworks, and they all, they're all, you know, acceptable. Mm -hmm. And this artist, uh, so the, the thing in the middle is his artwork, so it's, a, it's called a glaciator and basically what it does is it goes around uh, walking on the snow and it basically everywhere it steps it, it compacts the, so the snow uh, to make it hard and to make it into ice. So this work actually is talking about the glaciers melting. So he's trying to find a solution to try to make the glaciers, you know, um, increase again. Um, this artist uh, goes around photographing landscapes. Um, and so uh, you can see that it is beautiful, but also at the same time, imagine that it used to be on trees and now uh, because of mining, it's all become like that. So he wants to, you know, just highlight the the issue of land use, right? Uh, I think when we look at this photo, we can feel that, you know, what happened to all the trees, what happened to all the animals. It is beautiful in its own way, but is this what we really want? Then it was not moving. Uh oh. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this is another work uh, that's about ice, um, the Arctic ice. So this this artist is really famous for big installations, um, and recently a lot about the environment. So this one is actually he really brought the ice from the Arctic, and then people can see that it's melting. Uh, Satis is more famous for his uh, uh, other works that use gunpowder. Uh, but uh, this in this one, actually, he created all these fake animals and then he put them on the ship, which actually sailed um, uh, in Shanghai. Uh, so, yeah, so it's kind of funny, but also sad at the same time. It's, if you know the story of Noah's Ark, you know, all these animals were saved by Noah, and then they went to the promised land. But, but in this, in this um, work, all these animals are actually dying, um, and they have nowhere to go. Um, this work is quite straightforward. It's just signs. Um, sometimes we need to like, just, you know, tell people straight in the face, and this is what it is. So um, anthropocentrism is really um, um, is the term for putting humans at the center of everything. And that is actually a problem because right now uh, we really think of ourselves as the center 
of the earth, right? Um, animals, trees, and all these things are not important. They're all here to serve us. But actually, this is the problem. Uh, we are uh, actually destroying everything because of this. And so na by naming this what we are the asteroid, he's also connecting to, you know, the, the, to connecting to history by the asteroid killed the, the dinosaurs. Um, this work is uh, it's actually a performance um, in the Venice Biennial and it won a big prize. Uh, so basically when you go into the gallery, you see all these people like on the beach and they're enjoying themselves, the sun themselves. And actually it is, it is kind of talking about us who are just enjoying ourselves without uh, knowing or ignoring the fact that you know, the danger is, is here. Um, this is a, a work that all of us can easily do because plastic is everywhere. So basically this artist goes around, uh, she goes to the beaches of Sydney and she collects plastic waste and she makes them into nice pretty objects. Um, okay, uh, this one is, is really connected to the coronavirus. Um, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's really also talking about how unprepared we are and how, how are we actually going to survive this deadly global virus. If you do these things, you are actually really in trouble. So, but at the same time, this is kind of using humor to maybe highlight something or to diffuse the situation. Okay, this uh, I think this is the last one I'm sharing. So this work is a, it's a street art work. Um, from Malaysia, and he's talking about global warming, you know, all the ice cream is melting, uh, something really serious, but then in a very funky and very uh, fun way. Okay, so uh, I've given you some examples. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we will actually go to part two. You have any questions? You can turn on your mic or type in the chat. Right, so I guess uh, we are all very keen to start on part two. <laughs> so maybe we can have Jennifer, uh, maybe we can switch over to the overhead uh, camera and then we can, yeah, we can, we can start. Okay, so... I... Oh, okay, so it works. Okay, so now you cannot see me, but you can see stuff on the table. Okay, um, maybe uh, Jennifer, can you stop the share screen first? Okay, stop the share screen. Yeah. Oh, let me spotlight for everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I don't know anything, right? Uh, the, the screen is still on. <laughs> My screen is still on. Okay. The presentation. Uh... Let me try to stop. Oh, stop share. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So today we are going to do some hands on. This part two, we have about 10, 10 minutes. Um, so just to show you some of the things that I use. Uh, here's a marker, scissors. I have this punch which you can buy uh, from a few places. Uh, I think Spotlight is still having the sale if you want to get one. So basically what it does is you punch the shape. So, you know, you can punch all these little things uh, instead of cutting one by one. Uh, there are different shapes like circles, stars, hearts, different things. Um, I have tape. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of tapes out there. I have stickers. And, and I also had this um, this uh, tissue box, which I'm going to cut up because I like the gong si fa tai. I have this tie here. Um, uh, but I also have a round punch, which I punched some of these earlier. So uh, I'm going to do something on this green paper, which is also reused. There's actually text behind. Um, so... Okay, so basically now, uh, you're not actually watching me do it. You have to do it yourself. 
<laughs> so I hope you have prepared some some materials. It can be like flyers or or magazines or you know like tissue box or basically anything, even like your news textbooks that you don't want anymore. You can use them to cut out and to make into shapes. Um, so basically, for example, like this wrapping paper. Uh, I, I cut some of it out into the trees but like something like that which has already has text you can also just use the text or if there's like cartoon cute oh, cartoon cute things you can cut them out so it really depends on what you are trying you want to say uh, it depends uh, and then yeah you can use your creativity and make something so today because the theme is the climate crisis so I'd like you to think about um, some of the the issues or some of the topics which you are more concerned about or maybe you are feeling you know sad or you're feeling uh anxious about not having food anymore you can maybe try to write so uh, try to do something about it uh on your paper uh if you don't really want to cut things you can also use a pen you can use it to write or you can you know uh, use a combination of different techniques so it's really up to you uh, there's no right or wrong uh, you can even use cloth so like i have a handkerchief but i'm not going to cut it up you can use uh, things to paste on uh, paper uh, actually the easiest is if you have like a a4 size paper and then you just as the base and then you just add things on top Okay, so I'm going to leave you to it. Uh, if you have questions, you can chat, uh, type in the chat. Um, otherwise, we'll be back in maybe, oh, we're running late, uh, maybe 10 minutes? 5, 10 minutes, okay? And then you get to share your work with other people, with everyone here. Thank you. Yeah, you want to do something also? <laughs> huh? Yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing something being shown on screen. But they are supposed to do, not watch me do. I will do that, of course. <laughs> okay, you guys must do that. <laughs> Later we'll, we'll, we'll have lucky draw three people we'll have to present, okay? <laughs> hi, Jennifer. Yes, hi. Uh, about the um, is it exhibit on the Noah's Ark? Yeah. Um, yes. What is the message? Oh. Uh, I didn't get it. It is called the Ninth Wave, um, and it's actually uh, it is not he. The artist didn't say it is Noah's Ark. I'm just. Um, <laughs> Comparing it to Noah's Ark, okay? Because I know the Noah, uh, Noah's Ark story and it's quite similar, right? So you have all these animals on the ship and it's going somewhere. But actually, all his animals are dying. They are all like, like, uh, limp and like hanging by the side of the ship. So, so to me, it really is, uh, talking about how, um, the climate crisis is killing all the animals and all these animals have nowhere to go. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, um, very soon it will be humans too, right? So, but right now the animals are the helpless ones because really, like, they really have really nowhere to go. For example, like the polar bears right now, the ice is melting. They don't have even ice to stand on. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's that's what his work is about, lah. Mm. Mm. I'm just comparing it to the wasak. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you, uh, if you know. You know the Noah's Ark story, right? Yes. Yeah, so so will we actually find the land or we find the rainbow at the end? That's I think that is the big question, right? So yeah. So I think uh what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the hope lah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Thanks for elaborating. No problem. Thanks for asking. Please make some work. I want to see you. <laughs> You wanna bring you bring me some paper and mm -hmm. bring some paper and do that. Like I didn't bring a lot, so mm -hmm. uh, and also please if you can please don't cut out books that you that are still good because lots of people 
uh, really will appreciate secondhand books. Um, yeah, so try to like find newspaper or like you know scraps that you don't need anymore, and you can make something useful from them. So I'm too lazy, so I like to do this punch when I'm watching TV. <laughs> this is really useful, very fast. <laughs> mm. Guan, it's okay. You can talk about how you feel later, lah. If you don't make any art. <laughs> hmm? That is a very deep question. Actually, I think everything. How can the art save extinct animals? Ah? okay. The thing with extinction is once it's extinct, it cannot be saved anymore. So now we are not talking about saving extinct animals. We are talking about species which are going extinct, right? So there is a. There is a point in time when it's still possible to save them. Uh, but once the numbers drop to a certain number, it's impossible already. So for example, the koala, the koala bear is technically, they are still around, but they are technically impossible to save already. Um, so uh, we are actually trying to save whatever we can save right now. It's impossible to say everything, but those that we know of, and, uh, we can at least try to save. And of course, you know, people are more anxious about saving cute animals, right? Like koala bear, panda, all these people are really upset when they're dying. But animals which maybe are ugly or that we don't know about, or like insects, mostly people don't really like. So those things are actually more uh, precarious. They are in more like, dangerous situation and actually what we need to do is we need to save them because they are part of the uh the 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 whole biodiversity that helps to keep life going on earth impact us huh sorry Tom, uh, Tom, i don't understand what you mean by the last question okay so let me finish first so basically the arts is not directly going to save animals it is an indirect way so it is a good way for you to put your emotions and your thoughts in on paper. It's a good way to show people uh, what you're thinking. Uh, it's a good way to start a conversation. Uh, it's also a very... Um, uh, it can also maybe raise money indirectly and then with the money, if you sell this thing, you can maybe use the money to, to uh, donate to... Um, I know, like a orangutan project, maybe um, to help save the orangutans. Uh, there are many things. It's it's not really gonna directly save animals, but I think indirectly uh, the arts can do a lot of things. Or uh, it can offer an escape. It can offer uh, a kind of cat catharsis, um, and it can also be a catalyst for change. I hope that answers your question. I didn't get the last one, sorry. <laughs> ah, uh, yes, uh, it's a very, okay, the short answer is yes, eating more vegetables and taking less meat is helpful. Uh, but the longer answer is that if you Okay, the longer answer is that if you eat, not eat last, when you eat vegetables, you should really choose vegetables which are grown sustainably as well. So organic vegetables, vegetables which are grown without chemicals, um, preferably vegetables that you, you grow yourself so you know what you put onto the vegetable and into the soil. Uh, because we are talking about, we, we should not be looking at isolated related things anymore so we should look at how the system so basically if you 
if we eat a lot of meat, for every animal that we slaughter, there's a lot of food and water and energy that goes into into the meat, the animal, right? And then with this animal, you actually uh, then provide food for people. So this is quite a long and resource heavy way of uh, eating. So basically vegetables are good because it is direct. It is, you know, one vegetable to one person, for example, right? So then the, the water that is used, the, the sunlight, the land, all this directly goes to feeding people instead of this roundabout way. Uh, it's the same with fish. Uh, um, basically, with fish, we are taking directly from the ocean and that actually is destroying ocean life. Um, so there's, there's many, many issues. Please go and Google it. Uh, basically, meat is delicious. I'm a meat eater, but I really try to minimize. Um, and I think everyone really should uh, because we, we really don't have much left and we need to make it go further. Um, okay, so the take on impossible meat and the like, um, I think technology can help in many things. Uh, so for example, impossible meat um, uh, is basically something that is meat-like and that's made in a lab. Uh, that's made with technology and I think that is helpful and that is actually really uh, especially helpful to meat eaters who who crave meat and who cannot become vegetarian uh, but actually uh, personally I prefer to either eat meat or eat vegetables I don't like to eat processed food so different people have different preference um, and also uh, Impossible meat is really expensive. Uh, so I, I rather put the resources into growing vegetables and eating vegetables. Yeah, but there's different people have different takes. Now. Yeah. That's the answer. How's the app making going? Sorry, I can only, I cannot multitask. <laughs> Ah, yeah. oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and you can share it later. Okay. Yeah, so so someone mentioned about this. I think it's really useful because it really saves a lot on cutting time. And if you're making a lot, like if I'm trying to make a forest, I can, of course, cut one by one, but it's just going to take very long. Um, so this one is from, I'm not advertising here, but <laughs> this one is from Cow. There's a few different brands. Um, there was one time when it was really, really popular, but now it's pretty hard to find actually. So I got this actually on carousel. So it's actually broken, but still can use. Yeah. Ah, what is emission? Uh, uh, okay, uh, wait, uh. okay, let me answer the emission part first. I think uh, we're talking about carbon emissions. So when, so, how the, basically how the earth balance has been balancing itself is, um, well, it's very complicated science thing. Okay, I'm not a scientist, let me say this first. Uh, I might be slightly wrong. Uh, go ahead and read it online, okay? So basically, um, my understanding is that when things decay, like when we die, when plants die, when animals die, we decay, right? So when we decay, uh, but um, there is actually um, energy or uh, like a, a sort of carbon emission. And basically what happens with the soil and with the oceans and with the trees is that they actually take in these carbon emissions, they process them, and then uh, they, they, they take in, store it in their bodies, but also then they, they release the oxygen and the good stuff back into the atmosphere. So um, this is how it's been going on, you know, in, by, in nature. But basically, with our um, with our industrial uh, industrialization and with the uh, vehicles and with all these uh, fossil fuel uh, use, we are actually taking uh, out. We are we are actually taking out the carbon from the soil. 
we are taking out the carbon from the trees um, and releasing because for example when you you uh, for example when you cut down the trees uh, you're actually not only taking away the the ability of trees to absorb the carbon you are also um, when you burn the trees for fuel or whatever, like when you burn fossil fuel, um, basically you're burning this thing and releasing the carbon. So uh, the carbon emissions then become so much that actually the earth cannot absorb it back anymore. So that's what happens. It, it stays in the air, it stays in our atmosphere, and that is what is actually mainly leading to the increase in temperature. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of what I can explain. Uh, if you need more, please come on. <laughs> okay, we don't yeah. session today. Okay, so I, I want to answer this last question uh, before we we look at some of the artworks that you guys made, okay? Um, my friend said that vegetables and plants are also hurt that we consume them just because they do not make noise when we cut them. But they are also really this. Oh, wow. Okay, we could, this, this is... Uh, okay, I mean, uh, uh, okay, I'll just take these two questions, okay? Will more humans practice vegetarian diets help save more animals and planet uh, for future generations to some extent? Okay, um, yes, your answer, uh, the answer to your question is yes, vegetarian diets save more animals and the planet generation, uh, the planet uh, for future generation. And then we could uh, basically, um, for basically, Everything is alive, okay? <laughs> okay. I think there is slight differences in beliefs uh, of different religions, but basically everything is alive, animals and plants. So when you take a life, there is a change in the energy. Uh, but, the well, but the good thing about eating vegetables is that actually vegetables don't have nerve system. So nervous system, okay? So nervous system is when you when you when you hurt some like if you put me i will feel pain so basically vegetables don't feel pain uh they, there is a reaction in the plant because it is living but actually it does not feel pain does that make sense it's a slight difference um but it is a difference and uh and uh actually if you talk to people who can communicate with plants, <laughs> I know a few, I know is this like kind of new age or whatever, but I know a few people who do. Uh, basically, plants are actually uh, okay for you to eat. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very, very interesting. You can you can search about this. Um, so if you're interested, you can uh, search online for this thing called interspecies communicators. There are some around in Singapore as well. Um, you can take lessons and all that. Uh, but basically, the thing is that uh, we have to eat, right? So I think, uh, as with everything, we should choose the lesser evil. Lah. If you're going to uh, cause pain to animals and not cause pain to plants, I think we should choose plants. Lah. Yeah, that's my answer. Okay, shall we go to the next part? I'm very excited to see your artworks. Please show uh, something. If you don't have, maybe you can uh, maybe write something on paper how you feel, what you're thinking about, uh, maybe some of the things you are going to start doing today because of, you know, you want to try to make climate change not so bad, I mean climate crisis not so bad, okay? Uh, I need to change the camera. <laughs> ah, thank you. Yay! Hi! <laughs> okay. Oh! Wait, let me see how, how many of you have artworks. One, two. Two and me. Okay, la, then you have to share. La, okay? Yes, and, oh, oh Lee Hoon. Okay. Oh, wait. Kathleen is still doing. Maybe we can, since there's not many of us, maybe we can take turns to share, okay? Um, can we unmute? Okay, you want to share first? Okay. Um, All right. I have made a commitment to go green, and this is like a collage work for a smart and sustainable future. 
Nice, thank you. Ok, Hima, uh, Hima. Um, hi, ok, uh, my work, ok, I don't really know what it means, but <laughs> when I saw a picture of a ship and a doorway, uh, I just thought that I would combine those together, um, but I do know that it is something to do with uh, the sea and the rising sea levels. Mm. Yeah, so this is actually like a old, I, I pasted the pictures over like an old painting that I have that I didn't want to use anymore. So that was like a background. Yeah, so I didn't paint this in like 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm not so uh, quick. Yeah, so I, and then I pasted some like uh, circle stickers, like washi tape to mm. sort of like uh, represent like bubbles, I guess. Yeah, so it's like what if water and land was like inverted, you know, how would we... Yeah, what, what's that relationship like? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm still trying to figure out what the work is about, but like this makes sense for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it doesn't always have to be an intellectual process. Sometimes you go by feeling, and sometimes you just want, you know, to have a, a certain kind of feeling, like maybe, or certain kind of questions. So it doesn't have to be like straightforward. This is about what. Yeah, uh, thanks for sharing. Mm, say some more. I, one more person, right? Oh. oh, yes. Shannon. Oh. That's all right. Yeah. Shannon. Uh, uh, your mic. Okay. okay, so basically, I just cut out certain keywords from a brochure that is closest to me hmm. on the table. So, some like um, things like starting a conversation. Hmm. So, there's a, like a, this like little box that is like um, talking kind of thing. Then there's a cross, then you like stop, say no to like pollution and stuff. Then there's the word of unveiling. So you need to like unveil all the like very ugly truths that's happening. And then we need to so called like understand the problem by knowing certain kind of facts to share. Mm. Then next, uh, experiencing like the hot weather is not very clear. And then the word demystify like what's going on the climate crisis and then I found small little word like vision and objective so our vision is like for a better world and the objective to be like driven like uh, attempt to draw a little car that looks funny or a boat but anyway <laughs> yeah thank you very good summary actually <laughs> thank you and um, actually, you want to share your work? Can you send the library make a work too, so you can share. <laughs> All right, so um, I made something while hearing uh, Jennifer's uh, presentation. So this is like the last uh, bear in the forest. So, <laughs> All right, so I feel like bear. Um, that's, that's what I guess in a sense, um, what I feel about climate change and of course, loss of um, forests and habitats for animals. All right, so um, are there any more people who wants to share? So maybe if you want to, you can turn on your camera and then we'll uh, give you the spotlight. Uh, basically, uh, for me, it's because... Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Ah, maybe, uh. Yeah. Uh, well, I got a picture of a durian. So uh, anyway, I love to eat durian. So, so oh. if I find diversity loss, um, then there will not much durian trees left, we probably will not have durian, so that's why we can turn from happy to sad. So basically just that. Actually, we will have durian for a bit more. Uh, I think coffee and chocolate will go first, which is most news for most people. <laughs> thank you, I like durian too. Yeah. Um, is there one more about Anu's tree? Anu's tree? Anushri, you want to share? How about Kate Lane? Ah, okay, Anushri. Ah, you have to on your mic. Okay. Uh, what I did is I used uh, some waste uh, products like um, newspaper rolls to make uh, trees and um, I used the cardboard to cut a man, a stick man out of this um, just to say uh, that to stop deforestation. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. So cute. <laughs> How about Caitlin was making something you want to share? I'm not done. Oh, okay, it's okay. No problem. 
You can also show us what you did and then tell us what else you want to add. No? Okay, it's okay. Okay, so I want to uh, share this last part. Okay, so uh, let's move on to just the ending. Okay, I'll share. Uh, okay, so we've done the sharing. Okay. Oh, okay, so I want to share quickly this one. So basically, I call this the money tree. So it's actually, I actually did this on a piece of cloth. Uh, which has uh, coconut trees, and then I got the flyers from real estate people, and plus uh, plus this series of uh, tissue box which has um, Chinese New Year things, and then I wanted to talk about, you know, what is the price of trees and land, uh, yeah. So um, those of you if you are on uh, Instagram, uh, please feel free to post your what you did. Post a photo and then hashtag it climate crisis collage so that we can keep track. I can keep track of it because I want to do more work, more workshops. So hopefully more people can get inspired with what you did, and also uh, we can share and learn from each other. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, so I hope you you learn something today, and I hope that you can take more action to make um, the climate crisis um, less bad for everyone. Uh, so I think um, we'll end here. If there's anything you can chat, uh, we can. Uh, you can email me or um, or find me on my web website. Uh, and then uh, please feel free also to go and read more online. And there are also books in the library. And you should, you the librarian will share some of the books that he found. Uh, that might. Uh, help you with more information yeah Thank all you. right so uh maybe we'll just end today's session over here so if you want to find more books about climate change um it's actually in the 300 section uh sociology so then um books about uh upcycling there'll be there's a lot of uh, books on upcycling crafts and scrapbooking i guess are in the preparation section so if you are keen to find out more uh please come to the library and borrow them out all right, so um, thank you once again, Jennifer, uh, for coming. And this is the second out of 10 sessions that we have in a week in time. So we have a total of seven workshops and three talks that's coming up. Uh, so if you want to actually um, come for more sessions, uh, please feel free to uh, sign up. All right, so if not, uh, have a great Sunday evening. All right. Yeah, I want to plug my artwork in the coming show. Uh, so uh, for the artwork in the Jerome Library, uh, starting a in April, I will be actually making a sculpture from things that you find in the house. So something that everyone has, like hangers, like clothes. So come and see it. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good week ahead. And take care, everybody.